In today's lesson, we are going to learn about the advanced options for your text in Filmora. By the end of this lesson, you will fully know how to work with your text and use the advanced option to make them look even better. Let's add a text from the Titles menu. You can double click on any of the titles to see a preview. And once you've decided which one you want to use, click and drag it onto your timeline. Double click your text to get this window. In a previous lesson, we learned how to change the font, the size, and the position of your text. We learned about this window, the settings window, the transform window, and we also learned about blending modes. The blending modes for text is the same as it is for video. Let's grab a text that doesn't have a background and drag a background image underneath. Here we are. Let's just scale this in. Double click on your title and now you can use the compositing window and decide how this text blends into the background. So I'm working with this right now, and you can see how I'm able to change the blending modes very easily. Let's select the big one right here, or this uh, paint stroke, and I'm able to change the blending mode or how this uh, piece blends into the background. You can do the same for the text here. Anything that you select, you're able to work with the blending mode. Hit OK. Whatever you choose, you can adjust the opacity just as we learned. All right, I'm going to turn this off to get my original text. And now we're going to learn about this window right here, Advanced. Click it once and you get a new window. With this window, you get to change the smallest details in your title. Things like animation. You can see we have an entrance animation and in the advanced window, the title inspector, we can adjust the animation. Maybe I want uh, the headline to have nothing. I can click and drag this to the end so I don't have this animation. Let's play this back. Headline will just show up like so. Instead of showing up gradually like the other text, can see how your is slowly coming in, but headline just pops on the screen. I can also adjust how fast or how slow these text appears by offsetting them towards the right. So maybe I want here to show up first. So here shows up first and then the others follow. I can remove the animation, which is this guy. Maybe work with the duration. Play this back or just delete it if I'm not a fan of it. Click it once and then hit the trash icon right here. So I just have these text. Let's explore this window. Over here you have the layers of your text. We have four here. One, two, three, four. With any of these, I can double click and change something, uh, change the text. I can select one, grab these blue dots to scale it in or out, even flip it to the other side, or grab the handle here to rotate the other side. There we go. Let's hit reset. And I have my original text. Whatever you select, you can offset it if you'd like. Adjust the animation, which is the one right here. If I drag it, you can see we're getting, you can see we're getting a slower animation for the fade out. You can make it even faster. This is what we're working with. So it just fades out really quickly. You can adjust these to my liking. Every title that you bring in has an animation unless you grab a plain text. 
I can skip through my title to view it. Zoom into my new timeline over here. Uh, it's pretty similar to this, but this time we're working with the text layers. And then up here, I have other options. Let's select this text and start from this side. The first button allows me to create a new text box. So these are the text box. They contain text and we have four of them, but I could add a new one by clicking this button. Here we are. Maybe right, double click, write goodbye. If I need an additional text box, I can click this button to add a shape. Let's add a circle. Double click on the text and type something else. With the text, I get a separate layer and I can again grab the blue dots to scale it in or out. Grab this uh, yellow square right here to turn it into a square, a rounded square or a regular square. Rotate it if I want. And I have more shapes to choose from. We have arrows, speech bubbles, triangles, and others. If I want my shape to go underneath the other text, all I need to do is drag the layer right here below this one. So now goodbye is on top of the shape and so is this. Let's bring this below the paint stroke. And there we go. Now my shape is behind my uh, paint stroke and all the other text. Let's delete the shape and then we have another option for add image. Click this once and you can add an image from your computer. Place it somewhere else. And now I have this image. We can change the font of our text. Select the text, change it to something else. Let's go for Tahoma and I have changed my font. We can also adjust the size right here. Make it small, big, or really big. You can also adjust the size of your text by grabbing these blue dots. I grab my image and make it smaller. And let's delete here. You can select the text and then hit backspace as well. Over here, we have some text options. If I want to write vertical, I can click this button. So this right here is horizontal. Do this, now it's vertical. Next, we have the bold option, which makes our text bold. We have the italic button. And you can decide the text alignment. So from left to right, right to left, centered or justified. Let's hit OK and get another text. Let's increase the background. Get a plain text that does not have any animation or graphics. Double click, advanced. You can see we don't have anything going on. It, it just shows up on the screen. Let's create a new text box and type in something with two lines. And now because it's from the right to the left, it's looking like this. There we go. Let's delete this one. I can click this, it's left to right, centered or justified. So you can choose the alignment. Let's go with centered. You can choose the space between lines. We have two lines over here. Right now it's on zero, but if I add to this, you can see that the two lines have space between them. I can go to the negative side and bring them in closer, negative 50. And now they're really close to each other. You can also choose the space between the letters. Let's type in 50. And now they're, they have expanded. Again, if it's negative, it goes to the other side. So negative 50 and it's all cramped together. Let's type in zero to get our original thing or hit reset right here. If you have multiple things together, you can arrange them. So I have a text. Let's get a shape, get another shape and put it here. Again, deleting the text. Now I want the square to be behind everything. 
So I can drag it over here, but this could be uh, rather hard if you're working with multiple layers. So you can use this right here. Select your object, click this, move to back. And now it's behind my text. Let's grab the text and then hit move to front. There we go. I will grab another shape right over here. The circle right now is behind the triangle and the text, so I can click on it, move forward one. So it's in front of the text, but not in front of the triangle because I chose move forward one. You can change the uh, position of your object with this button. Hit reset. Now let's explore this area. Let's go to preset where we have some cool styles that you can choose from. This is pretty nice. But if you want to customize something, you can head over to the customize window where you can, first of all, change the input text, change the position. And then I can come to text fill, which works with the things that are inside your text. You can change the color of your type. You can make it a solid color, a gradient or an image. I can change my color to red yellow, or anything else that I like. You can choose a gradient fill, which asks you to choose two colors. Let's choose this and this. So you can see it's going from color A to color B. You can choose any other color and just get a cool gradient. You can adjust the opacity of your gradient the blur of your gradient. And finally, the angle of your gradient. Instead of this red to this blue, we can do uh, blue to red or any other position that you'd like. We also have image fill, which allows you to put an image inside your text. So if you have a pattern, you can go ahead and import it right here. I can adjust the opacity, the blur of my image. Let's stick with color fill. Choose a nice color. And I could also work with the effect. Let's bring these two, bring blur to zero. Head over to effect and I can choose how this text is uh, seen. You can see we get this 3D effect. Let's increase the size. You can change the effect of the text. Next we have text border. Now text border is what goes around your color fill or text fill. Right now it's orange as you can tell but I can make it green or any other color that I like. I could change the opacity of my text border not my text fill. The fill was already determined. We made it red. I'm going to bring this back to solid. So I can change the opacity of the border that goes around my text fill. I can blur it out if I like and change the size of my border. Let's move on to text shadow, which puts shadow behind your text. You can choose the type of shadow. If you click on this, we can uh, choose whether we want it to be from a certain angle in front of it or maybe on the other side, behind it, and just work with the shadow. Let's choose this one. I can choose the color of my shadow, which would usually be a grayish color. You can use the distance slider to move the shadow away from your text. Blur it out if you'd like, and change the opacity. You can change the color as well if you'd like something different. And just choose a preferred type. Let's hit reset to get our original text. I went ahead and typed my text again and chose another font. Let's take a look at the animation window. Over here you can change the entrance animation of your text. Cinema style typewriter, wavy style, and so much more. 
you can go on the uh, animations to see a preview and then double click to apply. Once you have chosen your animation, you can grab the bars right here to slow it down or make it faster. If you'd like to keep these settings for later, you can save as custom. Type in your name and hit OK. And now I have a custom preset for my text. Let's hit OK and now it's on my timeline. Once it's here, I can just increase the duration and double click to move it around. And I can still use this stuff that we already learned how to use, such as blending modes, opacity slider, transform it if needed, position X, position Y, rotate it if needed, and change other settings. Now I could head over to Titles, Default, open this up, and now my text settings are saved here. And that was how you can edit your text further with the advanced window. Now you know how to fully edit your text. Let's move on to the next lesson.